Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We are live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Absolutely delighted that you could join us. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff in his shorts, and Alison McConnell here with me to talk about the forthcoming friendly, Scotland against Austria. We'll also look back over the weekend in the Championship. We will uh, cast our eyes just a wee bit ahead to that game that's taking place on April 3rd because quite a few players, a lot of fans will be wondering if they're going to be fit for the game Rangers against Celtic at Ibrox. We'll discuss that and of course some of the transfer dealings and speculation that's going on in the world of football. You can offer us your opinion as well and why not hit the subscribe button, it would mean a lot to us and obviously give us the chance to get bigger, better and stronger with your support. So we'd really uh, do uh, appreciate the fact that you are subscribing in great numbers and of course sharing the feed and joining us on a weekly basis every day, Monday to Friday, we're on at four o'clock. Simple as that. Um, lots to look forward to. And of course, we, we don't mind a bit of banter as well if you want to. Um, you can actually post as messages, which uh, if you download the PLZ Soccer app, uh, once you download the app, you can actually post messages in submissions as well. Uh, and we'll read out as many of them as we possibly can. So good luck with that. Um, if there is any back chat today, if Ruffy speaks out of line, Alison, uh, the way things are going at the moment, you're more than welcome to just to walk up there and belt on one in the jaw. Apparently that's the norm now. Channel my inner Will Smith. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. So tread carefully, Ruffy. That's all I'm saying to you, you know, because one wrong joke and you could have a broken jaw. You know I would never, ever say that to yeah. you. I might. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's absolutely brilliant. Of course, uh, if that had been uh, if, that, if that had been football, there'd be somebody would be arrested. There'd be a full government investigation and new laws created for it as well. But it is, of course, the Oscars. Anyway, uh, we're looking forward to Scotland against Austria. I don't think the uh, I don't think the Austrian manager's looking forward to it. He reckons he's going to quit after this. Franco Foda, uh, no surprise because when you lose to Wales, everything goes flat. We expect not a great atmosphere for the match tomorrow. Yeah, I think that's the word for it. I think just all the anticipation and, and fizz has gone out of their campaign. I think having to play a game now on the back of it will, will feel like a hard shift. Yeah. I think um, it's one of those games that they'll just be wanting to endure the 90 minutes and get it over and done with. From Scotland's perspective, it's an opportunity to have a look at, at other players, maybe tweak a few things, uh, all in preparation hopefully for that June playoff against Ukraine. Yes, absolutely. Um, thanks to Mark Fairfield who says Ruffy's teasing everyone with those legs out again. Um, well, the only thing he's teasing is pigeons uh, not going back to their owners, to be honest with you. Um, but thanks for th thanks for the mention, Mark, of his legs. Uh, thanks to Thomas Lee, Elizabeth Clark, Steve McNeil, lots of people all joining us as well, Andrew Davidson. Um, Ruffy, are you excited by the, the second friendly from what you've witnessed from the first one? No, I, I think, as Ali has just said there, I think the excitement's going out of the game, you know, because obviously they'll have not the full-strength team, you know, but it, you can't take it away from our boys. But they've got to go and put a performance in. Uh, Stevie Clark now has thrown out the stats. What is it, seven mm -hmm. seven games in a run without getting beat? Yeah. You know, you want to keep that going into the next game. Uh, and the players that have been given a chance, I would like to see, I keep saying it, I'd like to see one of the goalkeepers getting a chance because none of them have played. You know, I think Craig Gordon's done enough to be number one. Halkett, I'd like to see him playing. You know, obviously McLean will get a shout. But there are guys in there that he really needs to have a look at. Yeah, because he, he, well, I've seen them during the training, but this is an ideal game to pitch them in and let them get a chance. Yeah, um, our reporter Kerry Pollock's been out there at the Orium ahead of the Scotland squad flying out to Vienna. Thanks Peter. I'm here outside the Orium again where Scotland manager Steve Clark and Andy Robertson have been looking ahead to tomorrow night's game against Austria. The Scotland manager told us that both Andy Robertson and Lyndon Dykes will be available for selection and that both players have been out on the training pitch already today and in his words will be ready to go come tomorrow night's game. Scotland skipper Andy Robertson will be hopeful to get that start tomorrow against Austria after missing out against Poland last Thursday. But the captain reiterated what the manager said last week, even though these games are friendlies, he would still like to win them. And of course, Scotland will be looking to keep that undefeated streak going. Yeah, look, you want to keep, you know, winning games. Um, and if you don't win, you don't want to get beat. You know, we're in a good, we're in a good run of form um, and you want to continue that. 
it won't only be Andy Robertson looking to get a start in that team tomorrow night. There might be a place for the likes of Craig Halkett, Aaron Hickey or even Ross Stewart. But this game is the last before Scotland play Ukraine in that World Cup qualifier in June. I'm sure whatever the lineup is that Steve Clark puts out there, everyone here in Scotland will be watching. Yeah, thanks to Kerry who was out there at the Orium and a lovely day and of course ideal uh, for the camp with the uh, draw. That means it's six wins and a draw, as Ruffy alluded to earlier, seven undefeated now. Kenny McLean, um, I think he was one of the players that will be hoping that maybe the manager gives him a run out. There is an incentive for a number of them because we now know it's going to be Wales, Ali, and a lot of these players might be utilising this friendly uh, and saying to themselves, listen, I can force my way into the manager's plans here. Kenny McLean missed out in the last tournament. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, if you're a player who's on the fringes, I, I think that would be the, the ambition to go and make a statement. If you do get an opportunity, make it very difficult. I would say that the spine of the team almost picks itself for Steve Clark. I think there are people who have done enough to hang on to the jersey, but I think there are maybe one or two options still there and I think there will be players who who will see it as an opportunity just to go and showcase what they've got and at least look to, to give them something to think about. Yeah, this is what Kenny had to say about obviously the chance to play in the match. Uh, I would have loved to have been there at uh, the last championships. I envied the lads who were there playing for Scotland. I don't think I need any more motivation to go to the World Cup. It's the World Cup. It speaks for itself. Uh, and dis the disappointment of missing out on the Euros will always be there. But when uh, going to a World Cup is at stake, you don't need too much extra motivation. Everyone is desperate to get to it. Not just me. We are going to do all we can to be there. And that is the case, Ruffy. You know more than most with all those pre-World Cup matches that you played in. Everybody's itching to be involved if you're if you're on a run of a successful run like Scotland are now. Yeah, and, and at club level, you've got to make sure your form's up to scratch, you know, and trying to be at your best when it comes along. You have to realise that, well, not this time in particular, but usually it's at the end of a season. You know, you've had a long, long, hard season and sometimes not a goalkeeper, but outfield players might feel a wee bit tired or whatever, but now it's in November, so it's not a lot of full season you're going into it. But I think he, unfortunately, I think Ali touched on it briefly, I think he's now a fringe midfielder. You know, I think our midfield speaks for itself. You know, Robertson, mm. McGregor, McGinn, you know, uh, and Gilmer. And I think the wide position in the other one, Nathan Patterson did particularly well the other night. He's got to come into consideration. So I just think, the fringe midfield players now are there for backup. You know, I can't see any of them forcing any of these ones out. It's funny, actually, when you mention that. If you've got a successful run in a say, you usually can pick 10 out of the 11 mm. that are going to start. Yeah, I think you could. I think you would know what his, his strongest 11 is. And I think, yeah, you feel for Kenny McLean, the, the injury that, that denied him the opportunity to go to the Euros and, and having kept his cool, actually, to score the penalty that took Scotland there. In the first place, I think you definitely have an element of sympathy for the predicament that he found himself in. And, and I'm sure he'll be hungry. I'm sure he, if you're in his position, you're not looking at it that way. You're probably thinking, I've got to burst a gut here to, to show exactly what I've got and to prove that I'm capable of stepping up. Yeah, the one thing you want though, uh, Ruffy, for this game and, and moving forward, whenever this uh, playoff is uh, being played or... Uh, I mean, I have my doubts whether it will be played or not, but if it is going to be played at some point in the future, um, then you're looking, you're saying to yourself, if Kenny McLean's, uh, you know, looking at it and saying, OK, I just want to make sure I'm part of that squad and things can happen, you're called on. Who else do you think uh, is on the periphery? Is, is Hickey hoping that maybe he could push himself in there as a late, late, you know, guy that has to be on the plane? Well, Stevie Clark never actually distanced him, did he, for not playing with the under-21s? You know, he said every every player uh, has got their own uh, mind of who they want to play for, so he never held it against them. But uh, it's another addition to the pool. You know, what, what you don't want is when the pool starts at 28 and there's six going to be left out, you don't want to be that six. You know, so you've got to make sure any chance you get to go in and say to them, then show the manager that, no, if man in my midfield gets injured, I'm quite happy that he could step in there. So that's what they've all got to do, you know. But uh, it must be a horrible, horrible feeling when that pool gets mm. cut to yeah. miss it. Yeah, absolutely. And this, of course, is on the basis that we can uh, engineer our way past Ukraine if it happens. And then 
uh, of course, get past Wales as well. You can give us your thoughts on that. Uh, not too far away in the distant future, um, there's going to be one lucky person who's uh, celebrating winning an iPad. Of course, we uh, ran the competition. Ruffy has uh, already selected at random the winner of it, uh, and we'll be putting the name up very shortly indeed. So it's well worth staying with us for that. And of course, we will have more competition prizes for you all the way to the summer. A chance for you to pick up something nice. Uh, and all you have to do more often than not is answer a very simple question or give us your opinion on something and uh, hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And if you hit the bell, you'll get all the notifications of when we are uh, going to be live with unique content or indeed the show on a daily basis. Um, really good news from the Friendly with Poland, Alison. 400,000 for UNICEF. Uh, £10 of every ticket sold was uh, going to be sent to the Ukraine. And you could see just under 40,000 at that match. And there's the, there's the uh, return from it. Yeah, there's two elements to it. I think obviously the fundraiser aspect to it which you would have to welcome and, and secondly I think when you have a successful team then you bring people in and I think it's it's indicative of the progress that Steve Clark has made with the Scotland squad that you're drawing an attendance like that for a friendly game. Yeah absolutely brilliant um, I think uh, text donations added to the 375,000 from the ticket sales which took it up to 400,000. It just shows you a good solid media campaign of promotion from the SFA on this and everybody really rallied behind it. Yeah, I think the whole of Scottish football's got right behind it as it always does when something like this happens. Uh, they're, they're not too slow to come up and, and throw their money into the buckets and, and, and raise as much money as possible and it's tremendous what everybody's doing. Yeah, absolutely. Well done to uh, all the Tartan Army who turned up there for that match. Still can't get over them getting a penalty just to spoil us with five seconds to go. We could have had a win there and seven wins out of seven. Just out of curiosity, i am got to ask you guys, if you were picking one player or one position that they're still an undecided on between back, middle and front in that Scotland lineup. Where is it in your mind, Ali? I think there is still a question mark over the right fullback position. I think you've obviously I think Steve Clark has shown his loyalty at times, but I think um I think there are question marks there. Uh, and I think I'm not sure that there are other gaps. I'm not sure I think more or less Every other position almost speaks for itself now. Yeah, it's an interesting one, Ruffy, because if you, if I was sitting here right now and I, I don't have a, a you know, a, what we usually do is we'll come up with a, a team that he might pick. It's going to be mightily difficult tomorrow because I do think he'll let two or three people sneak into it. But you've got Gordon there. Ali's throwing open the debate maybe over Nathan Patterson um, on the right-hand side. Left-hand... What, Let's say you're going with your three. So you're going Tierney, left-hand side. You're going Hanley and McTominay. And potentially Hendry might force his way into it. But then you've got, you've got Patterson. You've got Robertson. You've got the three you mentioned, McGinn, Gilmore and McGregor. And then for me, you've got Shea Adams and Lyndon Dykes. Unless we're going to say anything different. You're ready to come in, so are you I, having I doubts? Think, no, I just think Adams and Dykes have both... It cemented that role. Yeah. I think they've maybe been more of a success than what everyone would have anticipated. I think there was a clamour for Dykes to come in. I think you would have to say he's acquitted himself pretty well. I think they work well. I'm just not sure that, that, that there are any other gaps just now. Yeah, so it's really squad places. I would say so. Uh, we're going to find out. Well, surely Ross Stewart will get a run tomorrow, Ruffy. He's bound yeah. to get a run out to see yeah, what, he, what he can do. He, he's got to get a run out because there's going to be injuries. I mean, mm -hmm. although we're all saying there's a living, you know, that a living, I would be astounded if we come to when we play the next game at the 11 at all injury free. So he's got to have an option out there. He's got to do something, you know. But I think the two of you have hit it in the head. That That is our best side. Yeah. You know, if they're all available. My are saying Hickey can play on either side, but let's see what he can do. You know, and, and if Pat Patterson, I think, has been really impressive any time he's in a game. Yeah. Really uh, impressive. And on loyalty, I do think O'Donnell will be the one player that will feature, if not if not in as a backup now to Patterson, because Patterson just seems to excel and, and impress. You know, unless he doesn't kick a ball between now and the summer, you know, for Everton, which is a possibility, Alison. To be fair, though, he wasn't playing regularly for Rangers. He's not been playing regularly for Everton. Yeah. Yet when he's, he's coming in, 
he's coming in and he is still impressing. Yeah. I think um, so. I think it's maybe not dependent on what he's doing at club level. Steve Clark seems to have confidence to put him in, regardless. I think also it shows if he is playing, it gets if you get to a time next season when he's playing regularly, you've got to think he's going to kick on again. If you if you're getting this level of performance at international level when he's not playing every week then yeah. what are you going to get when he's properly match fit? And there's no set pattern to this anymore Ruffy because managers before would say if you're playing mm. for your club you're in with a shout. Now Steve right. Patterson's kind of, I can't, he can't put that out there because he hasn't got a leg to stand on with the, the, the Nathan right. Patterson argument uh, uh, and some people would argue and I know a lot of fans have actually said well wait a minute, what does Anthony Ralston have to do? He's playing regularly, you know switch, switching positions every now and then with Josip Juranovic but when he's in, he's playing well for Celtic, who could be in with a chance of winning a title. Yeah, I think he'd be the most upset of all the players that were left out uh, in this one. You know, you're right, he's been in and out, but any time he's come in, he's been superb. So we certainly have an abundance of footballs, know. you know, but I, I would I would hazard a guess with Steve Clark's loyalty that Stephen O'Donnell, whether he's a regular or not, will be in that final uh, squad yeah, for okay. what he's done. One man is a stonewall certainty to be featuring if he's fit uh, is the man that, t there's a story Alison which will just not go <coughs> away and it's quite simply Kieran Tierney moving from Arsenal. 50 million again the story runs at the weekend that Real Madrid uh, are looking at Tierney uh, seriously and taking him away from Arsenal. Still a young man, that would be incredible. It certainly would. I, uh, I have to say I think at 24 years of age and what you've seen from him so far in his career I think he is capable of going up and playing at a higher level again. I think he's had an excellent few years down at Arsenal. I think um, he's endeared himself to the, the Arsenal support just by the way he plays. I think he plays with his heart on his sleeve but there's more than just that to his game. I think there's a quality element there too uh, and I, I think it'll be an interesting summer for him. Yeah, absolutely incredible. 50 million, you, you never believe that. Uh, is 24 still? 24. Yeah, but I mean, these, these clubs uh, see 50 million as a, a, mm. a nice picking, you know, because it's any time Real Madrid or Barcelona go for a play, player that's usually 100 million, you start that, you know, but so they'll look at the 50 million and go, if we could get him for that, you know, it'd be an absolute bonus because I, I, I still think he's got another level mm. after that, mm. you know, the way he's progressing. Yeah. Okay. Thanks to everyone uh, for their messages. Did I, <laughs> Ali says um, Peter? Who is Steve Patterson? When he's the Huntley manager, did I say Steve Patterson? <laughs> you should have jumped in at me. Why didn't you belt me in the jaw when you had the chance there? You had the perfect chance just to come up and hook me one, but you just took a step back. Didn't I'll wait till it's personal. Honestly, you're, you're, you'll never be a fresh prince. You know that, don't you? <laughs> The reasons you never built it just because it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ruffy. It's the only thing that saved me. Anyway, uh, hi to Lynn, who's a jambo in Japan. It's just gone midnight here and she loves the show. Uh, Lynn, thank you very much for joining us. We've, uh, we've got people all over the globe, Ruffy, who join in with us and, and, and watch the show, uh, whether it's on the live or indeed uh, if they can't catch it, they catch up on the later on YouTube or indeed they download the app and watch it as well. It's absolutely brilliant, you know, I mean, I'm sure... We should you, be able to go anywhere in the holiday, Ruffy, and get some yeah. lodges, shouldn't we? Yeah, well, I would think so, you know, I mean, obviously, you're going to be in the vicinity of some people when you go on your wee trip. Yeah. Uh, your summer, you yeah. know, I might bump into somebody in Turkey next week. So yes, absolutely. You never know, and Ali will see somebody in Burnt Island when she takes his <laughs> 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 he really is a rat, isn't he? Um, yeah, absolutely. Ruffy won't be with us next week. He's going on holiday during the season. Just thought I'd lay that out there, Ali. It's just a lack of <coughs> it's a lack of professionalism, isn't it? Nobody leaves. <coughs> Nobody leaves on the eve of the old firm game, which is going to be massive. Is that what I'm saying? Is that fair? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We will be relying on other people who will be in here next week. It's an absolute disgrace because he doesn't want to take the flack off giving a prediction, uh, which we're all going to have to do on this one. It's going to be massive uh, Rangers against uh, Celtic. Uh, yeah. Thanks to everyone from all over the place, uh, near and far, who uh, join in with the programme and uh, obviously they try and uh, offer us their opinions on how they think the big game's going to go. And of course, there's some smashing games at the weekend. But just before we get to all the updates on that, what happened again to yeah. your lot in the championship? You've, you're on the worst run of all time. 
Well, it's four defeats if you class that as the worst <laughs> <laughs> defeats. But uh, uh, no, I feel sorry for the manager and the players at the weekend because yeah. obviously. Did you batter them? No, no, no. <laughs> no I, I can't stick up for the previous games in Fenway and Hamilton. We were absolutely dire, but the player pool at the weekend there was, was limited. Obviously, we were some of our best players not there, and we had two. We'd only four subs and two of the boys were academies players, yeah. you know. But I'm sure all the teams have went through that at some stage. We're unfortunately getting it. How many injuries have you got? Turn. Well, we're missing two strikers on Saturday. Lewis Mayo was away with the Scotland under-21 team. We had three with COVID. Richard was obviously injured. So you're talking six players. And yeah, six teams players. Well, to start. And that, that, takes a, that really... That really takes a huge uh, dunt out of your squad, considering, yeah, well. this is especially since you've got the biggest squad and the most money. No, wow, I that's a real blow. That's not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> but we miss Brian Graham. Brian Graham is top goal scorer yeah. in, in our division. You know, you can't even miss him in another and play. We had the young Rangers boy up front who did, who did all right. Yeah. Not goal scorers. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I have to say, and, and, I, and I'm being slightly facetious, but I have to say, um, Kyle Lafferty. Mm. I mean, his first one's a free kick that would have easily graced the Bernabeu. It was a fantastic free kick, roof of the net, over the wall. Um, and I just thought his technique was superb. And if we're talking skill, uh, his second goal, Ali, the first touch kills it dead in front of him. And then he just fires it into the back of the net. It's two great goals. I think what you have to remember is he's an international player playing at championship level so I think you're going to get elements of that in his play and I think uh, it's been money well spent yeah. by Kilmarnock because yeah. it looks as though it's capable of delivering the championship for them. Oh there's no doubt, you look at the games you know, I mean, I'm not saying on Saturday but if we had a Kyle laugh at the up front in our team you'd feel a wee bit more confident because he does score goals and he's done yeah. it since he came. Has he said he's not going to play in the national football anymore? I don't think, laugh at I, I've not, I, I, never, I never saw anything. I, I, I think uh, he can easily continue, Rafi. I just thought he was. I just thought he was top drawer. I don't know if he said that he's not playing international football anymore, but he can easily do it. I mean, his his technique was absolutely superb, and there's no doubt Killian are in the box seat and favourites. And if you look at the results in the championship over the weekend, uh, as well as your loss to Kilmarnock, there was a humdinger of a match between, uh, of course, Arbroath and uh, Wraith Rovers. It finished 3-3. That was a great match. Inverness dispatched two past Infermline. Uh, Killian, Partick Thistle, as we know, was 2-1. And then it was uh, Morton 1, Air United 1. The Wraith Rovers uh, manager John McGlynn must be just uh, beating his head off a brick wall, Ali, because they were they were three one up. But somehow um, now our broth, I'm going to be kind to Dick here. They do play a bit of football, but it was a kind of a pff, get that ball into the box and see if we can pick up the scraps for a, a goal to get back in it. And that's the way they did it. Yeah, I think they'd be delighted just to have got away and have a point, and they're still hanging on in there. I know Kilmarnock are in pole position now, but our broth are still firmly. In the running and given the season that they've had, I think you know they'd be very optimistic going into any playoffs. Yep. The, the, the team that's going to cause the damage to everybody is Hamilton Nackies. Hamilton Nackies have got their act together now. Mm. You know they're, they're playing good football and they're winning games. So whoever's got them in the fixtures and the run in, you know, will better be careful because uh, they, they're liable to take points off the big ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, we've, we've not got them. We've played them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, you just sit there. You're on a run. You you can't be gloating at anything at the moment. Uh, thanks to uh, quite a lot of people who are messaging us with regards to Scotland and their own team as well, uh, and of course Willie, who's actually trying to guess all the pundits and uh, their predictions um, over the course of uh, the next few days. Everybody will change. Uh, of course, we'll get your your prediction before you leave for Turkey, yeah. Ruffy, mm -hmm. um, in case you don't get back into the country. Um, and we'll get yours as well, Ali. It's always good to get yours today because you <laughs> won't be on the programme until next Monday. So you may as well get it now and then that can just let everybody absolutely give you an absolute tanking on this feed, um, which is the norm uh, these days. Um, but nevertheless, uh, it's all about opinions on the game and it's whether you know some players declare themselves fit for this when it's it's such a tough one to call um, because I don't know about you, uh, who did you pick to win the title at the start of the season? And it was early days before people were, we, we accept everybody on the show was picking it before, you know, late signings were made. I think I went for Rangers. Yeah, I picked Rangers as well um, to win the title. I'm fairly certain I did. I can't 
I can't actually remember, but I'm fairly sure I, I would have went for Rangers. Yeah, I thought Celtic still looked in disarray at yeah. the start of the season. It took them a while just to, to, to find your... I would say it was September before Celtic started to really steady things and, and start winning games and looking a bit more composed. I'm fairly certain I went for Rangers. Who did you I go think for? everybody went for Rangers yeah, because, because of the state that Celtic were in. I don't think anybody saw, even though whoever it was came in and, and would get you know, a squad ready enough, you know, to change the, what was it, 23 points or something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a, it was a far, far unbelievable task, you know, and to be sitting where they are just now, I don't think many people would have saw that coming. Yeah, um, as regards predictions, thanks to George who says, Alison will say Celtic will win 100%. <laughs> So there you are, George. George, hang on, you've only, you've only got half an hour, George, to wait. You won't be disappointed. Uh, you know, you might hang on and she... I mean, she could surprise you, George. You just never know these days. Ruffy uh, might uh, surprise us as well. Um, OK, uh, thanks to everyone for giving us uh, their thoughts at the moment. We'll read out more of the predictions on it. Just before we talk about the players that are available, can I just say, we've talked about you in the Championship, can I just say congratulations to Kevin Thompson and Kelty Hearts because uh, they are lead to Championship. Champions. What a story this is, Ruffy, because um, we were we were out there at Kelty, we were watching them all those years ago with Barry, and now Kevin has just taken up the baton and, and, and taken it on to another level. Yeah, but I think in all fairness, you've got to give Barry a wee bit of credit there. Yeah. You know, he left them in a very, very a good place. I think in hindsight now he's probably regretting uh, his decision, but he wanted to move up, and quite rightly so. But no, they're a very professional outfit, you know, and that's why the... The rest of the clubs in that division, the, the clubs that have been there for, what, 90 years are now getting a, a, a reality check that there are very ambitious clubs out there who are prepared to pay money to get higher up. And they're the ones that are going to fall out the other end. You know, I don't know who is it, then is it Cowden Beath, who will be playing maybe Fraserburgh or something yeah. like that, and Bonnie Rig. So, you know, you know, well done to them, you know. Well, ex Thistle players in their team as well, we Joe Cardo, yeah. uh, Tom Awea. Uh, Higginbottom. So no, they're a professional outfit. You, you can't get away from it. People behind the scenes uh, have done tremendously well. And I think this pyramid scheme, when it works yeah. properly, yeah. Uh, will certainly help clubs who've got real ambition yeah. to play football. Yeah, there's been too many clubs in that division, you know, just happy happy just sitting there with nowhere to go, you know, and then showing no ambitions to get out of the league. And, and they're the ones that are now getting found out by the teams who do want to get out of the league and the ones who want to come into the league. So you would you would expect behind the scenes that we try and do something about it, but it's, it's the same teams down the bottom all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Robert Rowan uh, has got an interesting point here, Ruffy. I'm not sure it'll, it'll take off. Um, certainly won't take off in your house, Ali, but uh, you know, I don't know if uh, we'll get away with it, Ruffy. Robert says, Peter, uh, your wife's a Rangers fan, so is Tams, and of course Richard Foster's. Uh, wife is a, a Rangers fan, as we know. Amy McDonald's a big Rangers fan. How about the wives present the show for the weekend? That would be <laughs> that, <laughs> not night. That would be. It may as well have to be the afternoon. <laughs> 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 Brilliant, Ruffy. I could just I well have to say, if your wife opened a bottle of wine, my wife would probably drink it in the afternoon as well. Um, but nevertheless, no, we can't. We couldn't have, couldn't have a whole four or five of them just with uh, Ranger scarves on, Ruffy. That would no. be. You need a bit of balance, don't you? Yes, you do. Yeah. You do. Um, you, you couldn't do that. No, <laughs> be a very good laugh, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Uh, with a few glasses of wine, I think that might happen, Robert, but uh, I'm not sure it'd be a good idea on the channel. Anyway, oh, Stephen McNeil's gone for it early. He says 5-0 to Celtic. That's <laughs> what Steve, Stephen's just decided to open the bottle and never mind the glass. He's just gone bananas. Um, I love people who just get ready for this because the build-up to it is absolutely sensational. I, you know, you love the buzz. You love hearing all the, you know, listen, the... I cannot think of any former players will just be lining up to back their team for this one. Um, and, and the reason why it's so exciting to look forward to it coming up on Sunday is the fact that it's so finely balanced. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Rangers know they have to win it. I think they, they need to go. I think a, a draw would probably suit Celtic. I don't think they'll play that way. I don't think they'll play for a draw. I think they'll go and try and win it. But I think Rangers know realistically that they need to win it, and if they win it, I think it's anyone's guess then what happens in the running. But uh, I think if Celtic come out of it with a point, I think you'd fancy that they would go on and, 
and then win the next one at Celtic Park after the split and go on to the title. Yeah, um, it, it really is that crucial for both sides, Ruffy. And that's why I think a lot of people will be wondering about, you know, Morelos came back from the Columbia squad with a muscle injury. He clearly wasn't going to be able to play in their uh, game. And he's, you know, I think they, was, they were hoping to at least have him for Venezuela, but it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll have to assess that immediately when he comes back, you know, and he's got, oh, he's got a few days. You know, to see if if it does need treatment, it just depends on how what extent it is. And I was sitting going, and you two can help me out here. Of the two teams, the best 11s, how many of them were all away in international duty? If you just go through the team, quick, Celtic, how many were away in international duty? Not the goalkeeper, fullback. Greg Taylor. Greg Taylor, yep. two centre half. Starfelt. Iranovic. Um, Iranovic, yeah. Yep. Uh, beat on got midfield beat on and, and he got, got to come back early from yeah, the friendly McGregor. Else have you, got? you got McGregor away Roderick pulled out because Hattati. he was injured Hattati, Hattati was away yeah uh, up front well, Jackie Marcus was away yeah, yeah. and the Rangers Rangers hard. See if you're going to ask a question like, no, why don't you, debate, why don't no, you come in with a sheet of paper? No, I, was, <laughs> no, I was just going to see well, there's, no, there, there's, no do McGregor, do there's no McGregor or Tavern here, so you don't need to worry about that. Helander maybe with... Um, Sweden, I don't Sweden? think he was no. called up. Um, um, so there's nothing. Golson wasn't. No, nope, Golson wasn't. And then left side. Um, Morelos was obviously. Bassi. Bassi. He's come back. Bassi. Balligan. No. Nope. No. Nope. And then the midfield. Ryan Jack. Ryan Jack. Was with the squad. Not playing. Not playing. So really, Rangers players should be fresher than the Celtic ones if there's not yeah. that many away. And, uh, and, af the point. and after that assessment? No, I just thought, you know, if you're going to, you come back for these internationals and people do pick up knocks and injuries. Yeah. And so on that analysis, I would say there were more Celtic players away than Rangers players but, away. But I think going into this game, I think the key element, I think, will be quite simply Giovanni Van Bronckhorst wanting Morelos to just say, listen, let's strap it up or take an injection, anything, just to get yourself out in that park, because although his record's not great in old firm games, he, th this is the time where I think he's he, he's looked sharp this season. He's looked as if he's like felt like 18 goals. Mm -hmm. he, could, he could snatch something in this one. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think if you're in Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's shoes, you definitely want him to declare himself fit. And I think maybe want, what you want to see is, is an element just of the mentality that Callum McGregor had for the last one. Whatever it takes, I'll go out and play. You know, he wore the mask for it. And I think that sends a message to the rest of the squad too. I think it's a, a, a statement to make and I think it lifts people round about you. And I do think overall he is important to how Rangers set up, to how they play. I think they're stronger with him in the team than they are without. And I think, <coughs> as we've, we've just discussed, I think Rangers need to win it. I think they need goals. So I think they'll be doing everything they can to get him onto the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's absolutely crucial to go out in that one. Thanks to Gavin, who says Bassi, Balligan and Hellander were away. Um, so... I, again, uh, it's all the players that go away come back if there's a few knocks. There certainly hasn't been anything that's materialised that suggested anything other than maybe the real worry is um, Alfredo Morelos. But if you look at any newspaper um, at this moment going into a, an old firm game, you won't hear anything coming out from the managers or the clubs to give, give up any sniff of a player not being available to them. In fact, I think the big debate, if Morelos is the big worry for Rangers, I think the big debate among Celtic fans is wondering whether Kyogo is going to suddenly make a cameo appearance at some point in this one. It's an interesting one. I think, like Morelos, I think he's he's very important to Celtic. I think he very quickly took on talismanic qualities within the squad. I think he energises them. I think he lifts them. I think he, he's a player full of skill and craft and movement. But I would be stunned if he had to play a part on Sunday. He's been out for three months and even then he, he picked up the injury when he was just back into the team on Boxing Day. I think the most optimistic you would look for is maybe a, a spot on the bench. But even then, I think it would still maybe take you by surprise. Ruffy? Yeah, I, I think even on the bench, you know, that you knew 20 minutes to go and you think you could get 20 minutes out of him, you know, that uh, he would give the opposition uh, a worry. There's no doubt about that. 
uh, and the big guy's been banging goals in, you know, and if you keep putting balls in the box, he seems to have the knack of being on the end, of, not them all, but some of them, but, uh, and I think it's going to be a great game. I, I, we've already seen the way Celtic play. They're, they're going to go at it as if it's a home game. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sit in, they're not going to defend, they're just going to play the way they play and take the consequences. And, uh, and Rangers obviously get the home advantage and you're saying Morelis is the big shout. You know, you want to keep that. If there is a problem, you want to keep that as quiet as possible. You don't want to be announcing that. Uh, and then in the other sense is if you keep everybody worrying if he's fit and then you do announce it, he is fit, then you get the added bonus, you know, of everybody saying, oh, he is fit. Yeah, well, I know um, Beaton uh, had asked to be uh, <coughs> excused from the friendly against Romania, so he'll come back into the, the Celtic squad. I just wonder who, who's got the... Who's got the strongest squad in this one? Will it come down to the bench? I know Ange Postecoglou more often than not has used that bench to great effect. Uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is less likely to go to the bench. I mean, that's been some of the concerns from the Rangers supporters, certainly in our feed. Yeah, I think so. I think what Celtic have now after the January window is more depth than what they had in the opening months of the campaign. And... You mentioned near Buton, I think the, the centre of Celtic's midfield is the most competitive area of the pitch for places. I think when you look at the options that are there, I think Matt O'Reilly's made a, a fantastic impression since he first came in. You've also got Hitati who started off very well and I was curious and, and quite tickled to read this week the, the quotes that came out from Japan when Hitati saying he thought he had difficulties adjusting to, to Scottish football when you think of the impact he made immediately uh, playing against Hibs and you know, the, the game against Strangers at February, I think he, he had a, a fantastic introduction to the, the Celtic lineup. So if he thinks he can improve, then I'm sure Celtic fans will be licking their lips at what might be coming next. But I think even if Tom Rodgick doesn't make it, I think there's still an abundance of options there. I think Callum McGregor obviously goes in. I think he's so crucial to the way that Ange Postecoglou side play. I think he links Celtic from middle to front so seamlessly. Uh, and then I think there are there are other options there, whether or not he goes for Hitati and O'Reilly or, or maybe mixes it up a bit, but he certainly has decisions to make. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder how long before uh, Callum decides to take the mask off, uh, Ruffy. Um, well, that'd be doctor. That'd be whoever the club doctor decides, you know, the surgeon or the, the consultant. You know, they all advise him, you know, because there's no point in taking it off too early and if you yeah. clatter and you know, you're, you, you're set back for the rest of the season. So it doesn't seem to bother him. No, it doesn't actually. You know, his, his, his vision doesn't affect him. It's incredible actually, because you would think his peripheral <coughs> vision is affected by it, but it certainly hasn't reflected in performance levels. No, absolutely not. Um, I mean, he's just, he's just the absolute linchpin for me of that Celtic midfield. But um, we'll not get yours right now, Ruffy, but Ali, um, before we go on to the next topic, as you look at this, uh, George already has said, you know, which way are you going on this one? Which way are you going, Ali? I genuinely don't know. I think, uh, I think it'll be open. I think uh, you know how Celtic will go and play. They'll go for the win. I think Rangers need to win. I think it's a, a win or bust for them. I'm tempted to say a scoring draw. I'm tempted to go for a two each, I think. Two each, yeah. Mm -hmm. What a game it will be a two each, Ruffy. If it is two each, four goals. It is. No, I hope it is. Because oh, you hope it's two two? No, no, I hope, it, hope there's goals, you yeah. know, because, I mean, that's exciting for everybody, you know, not only the people in the stadium, but the people watching it. And it, if it's two each or whatever, you know, it's usually goal mouth instances and people, things to talk about. And well, I, I hope there isn't anything. <laughs> bad to talk about. I hope it goes smoothly. I don't hope, hope we're not at the end of 90 minutes going, oh, that was a penalty, that wasn't a penalty or, or whatever, you know. Let's hope it's whoever wins, wins fairly. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd, hate, I'd hate for us to be talking about the referee, especially now, um, because this has got, um, this has got 1999 written all over it because it is so tense, hasn't it, Ali? And I think when you have the likelihood of three games in quick succession, I think sometimes what you find is that at least one of them tends to, to carry a bit more tension than others. I sometimes wonder if there's just grievances that carry over from one game to the next when, when you play them so quickly together. But I would agree with you. I think if anyone emerges on Sunday having won the game, I think they'll feel very quietly that 
they've got a hand on the title. Yeah, uh, April is going to be um, a roller coaster of a month. Uh, certainly, if you are a Rangers or a Celtic fan, it's going to be interesting to see if there's someone there with the double or, as one Rangers fan mentioned to me, listen, there's a potential treble available for Celtic, but there's a potential treble available for Rangers as well, Ruffy, uh, because Rangers could uh, win the title, um, win the Scottish Cup, and the Europa League. Yeah, yeah. yeah if, if, you're, if you're in it, you've got to play to win it, you know, and uh, as long as it's there, uh, and they've done remarkably well in Europe, you know, so why not? Yeah. Hang on to that. Yeah. Why not? Okay, uh, it's all up for grabs. Do you think Rangers can win a treble? Can Celtic win a treble? Uh, it's all open to debate. It's your opinion that matters on it, thanks to so many of you who've been posting your messages. As ever, uh, as we always mention, uh, because it is football, lots of people are uh, giving us their thoughts in a balanced manner and uh, putting up some, uh, well, uh, backing up their statement of who they think will win with uh, some good reasoning uh, and some good explanation of why they think they'll win. Um, some people are just a wee bit over the top and as ever, we always like to ban people who have a clue what they're talking about or are abusive. We do that on a regular basis uh, on the programme because we try and uh, promote the fact that it's decent people who are watching the programme and 99% of them are and if you are one of those people, thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you haven't already, please do so. It keeps us going, uh, gets us stronger and of course we really appreciate your support. So if you hit the subscribe button and the bell uh, we'll be absolutely delighted and you'll be able to if you download the PLZ Soccer app get all the breaking football stories at your fingertips you can actually watch the program live on your phone and if you miss it you can catch it up in the archive as well and there's managers and player interviews a plenty there from not only scotland but uh, right across the uk europe and globally too so uh, with that in mind uh, we've looked at the old firm game we'll get ruffy's opinion on who he thinks is going to win on thursday um, just before he jets off to try and enhance the spray tan that he's got on at the moment. A um, lot, of, lot of speculation. We talked about Kieran Tierney in the speculation, Ruffy. It looks as if Hibbs and Aberdeen are in a battle for Jack Anik. Um, I mean, he had a little spell there at Rangers where it, it just he was never going to break into no. the side. There were too many people ahead of him. But this is a chance now, maybe with his contract up in the summer, for somebody to snatch him. Well, Jim, Jim Goodwin, he'll know what he's getting. You know, he's seen him for the last two or three seasons and uh, he has been impressive. That's why these teams are after him. I think he has to decide himself. Is, is he going to Aberdeen to be number two or is he going to Hibs to be number two? Yeah. You know, the, the Hibs, uh, sorry, Aberdeen seem to have been looking for another goalkeeper for a while. So I'm just wondering whether maybe Joe Lewis has, has decided he's not retiring, but he's going to move on or something like that. But yeah. I, I wouldn't like, to, I, I wouldn't like to think he'd go to either of the two of them if he's no number one. Yeah, it's no surprise that Jim Goodwin has looked to yeah. St Mirren for some of the, the players that he has at his disposal. Just cherry picking the odd one or two. Connor Ronan for me is a no brainer. No, no, fantastic. Even season. though he's a Wolves player, may yeah, I add. Yeah, he's a fantastic <laughs> player and he's going to get more games at international level. He's going to become, you know, I would say quite pricey. You know, if he keeps getting international football and the way he's playing with his club, so the sooner somebody gets a hold of him and gets a deal with Wolves, and if it is to be, the the sooner the better. Yeah, and of course the the other aspect of this is is Jim Goodwin tries to build that side at Aberdeen. He'll be also aware of the fact that some clubs will be hovering about the likes of Lewis Ferguson as well. It's whether he can convince Dave Cormack mm. to give him a, you know a new deal. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I actually, I'm surprised at the length of time that Lewis Ferguson has stayed at Aberdeen. I thought last summer he might have moved on. I think <coughs> there, I thought there may have been a bit more interest in him. I think he's a, I think he's a quality player. I, again, he's one that I think would be capable of going up a level in performance. So I think, I think if a decent offer came in, I don't think Aberdeen would would stand in his way at any point. Obviously, he's out of contract this summer, but I think he might fancy a move elsewhere. Yeah, just out of curiosity, I'm looking at the games at the weekend, Dundee are against Aberdeen on this Saturday. <clears throat> There's a four-point gap at the moment, Ali. Is this the point where you, do you, I know mathematically there's always the chance that a, that a team can still gain the points needed to get playoff or uh, higher than that, but is it getting to the, the real cut-off point here for Dundee? Richard Foster mentioned last week to us he thought Dundee were gone. I think there's been a sense of that in recent weeks. I think um, I think sometimes you just you, you, you get a vibe 
of a team where they, they look as though they're already beaten. I think Saturday's probably huge for them. I think if they can take anything from the game, then it might give them a bit of hope going into the run-in. But I have to say, I think you'd fancy Aberdeen for that one. Yeah. Um, Ruffy, uh, I, I, I've, I've seen them a couple of times now and I'm... I, I don't know where it's. I don't know where the inspiration is coming from. If Charlie gets back in the side, maybe he'll add that little bit of experience. But for me, time's running out on them. Yeah, there's nothing going well for them at all. They're still losing silly goals, and they're not scoring enough to win games. So I think if they were to beat Aberdeen at the weekend, it would have to be a one nothing or something like that. But unfortunately, they're getting Aberdeen at the wrong time. They seem to have got the right a wee bit together. They're not fantastic, but at least they're they're, they're getting points in games now where they weren't. So. It's a really tough one, but uh, it's amazing. One we win, you know, can give you belief, and that's what they're going to hope they can get. Yeah, we're talking about players that uh, would like to um, basically stay in Scottish football. Maybe Barry Mackay. Uh, I think if Hearts could get him on a, uh, a new extended deal, that would be good. I think he's open to it, certainly receptive to it. I think he's been excellent this season. I think he's had a very, very good campaign for Hearts. I think, I think Hearts would be delighted to keep him. Uh, on, a, on a longer term deal I think he's offered so much I think he's been arguably their best season maybe behind Craig Gordon this season but I think he's been he's been excellent Yeah, I, I like him as well scored a great yeah. goal last week, Ruffy Yeah, and the other thing as well is he's had a, he's had a sample of down south, hasn't he? Yeah. So he's been there he, he knows what's down there he knows, you know what the how it goes so it depends what Hearts offer him and if Hearts offer him better than are not better than what he was getting down south, but something to say, well, I don't want to really go away down south again. This offer that's on the table is good enough for me to stay. Yeah, um, good player, neat, tidy, can score a goal uh, when he puts his mind to it. I think there should be more goals in Barry Mackay. I still can't get out of my head the absolute raker he scored in that yeah, semi-final against yeah. Celtic. What a goal it was. I think him and the boy Ronan will be up for the goals of the season. Yeah. Uh, so similar strikes, you know, great, great strikers of the ball. So, yeah, I think they'll be in the final 10 anyway. That's a good shout, Ruffy. It's something we haven't actually talked about, but it's going to come to the forefront of our discussions uh, in the next few weeks. Who will be in the running for Player of the Year? Who's going to get Manager of the Year? I noticed, I can't remember if it was Chris Sutton, uh, was talking about, you know, Ange Postecoglou getting Manager of the Year, even if they don't win the title. And I thought, you know, um, I think... I think uh, you'd be scraping the barrel alley trying to suggest somebody just because they've turned round a club from the mayhem but yeah. not achieved what it, what he wants out of it. You've got to look at people and what they achieve on merit. Surely. Yeah, I would agree. I think uh, I think if he goes and wins the title, yeah, I think he probably would be. But I think any Celtic or Rangers manager is judged on whether or not they can deliver a championship. And I think if you don't... There may be a caveat to say that you've improved a team, but it, it only lasts so long, I think, realistically. You have to be delivering and winning things, and I think it's too early to say. I think yeah. I, I wouldn't have my mind made up yet just now at all. When? Monday? <laughs> <laughs> well. well, it could be Monday, Ali. Um, but can I ask you on that point, we were talking about manager here, is there any, could you think of two or three right now that are, I, mean, I think always... April and May are the sweet spots, April especially, the sweet spot for players to make a real push to the forefront of, never mind journalists and the football writers, mm. but certainly the players themselves when they start to see a player who's making a real move for the player of the year. Yeah, I sometimes think we cast our votes a bit too early. I sometimes yeah. think like we, we vote when there's still a bit of time left in the season for obvious reasons that you have to collate it. But... Um, yeah, I think I think sometimes too voting forms come out when games are fresh in the mind. Yeah, that it maybe just sways you one way or another. I think there's no doubt Mackay's going he's to be player of the season for Hearts. Yeah, but is he enough? Is that enough to push him to the forefront of the player of the year in Scotland? I think he might be one of the contenders. Yeah. I don't know if he's done enough to take the crown. I think you can't had, have anybody uh, at Aberdeen. No, uh, I think he had Kyogo Furuhashi stayed fit. I think you, 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 there was a point in December where you might have given him it. Yep. Um, I think if he'd stayed fit, I think he, he'd have been a clear winner. Um, I'm yeah. not sure. It's the first time for a while there's not been a stick on. Yeah, absolutely, Ruffy. There's That's no why I was asking there's, you. I can't think of. I can't think of. I'm going to. I'm going to go back to you in the goal of the season in a minute. But I cannot think of anyone who's an absolute stick on. 
Um, I mean, I, I think there's got to be, and in player of the season is what you do domestically. There's undoubtedly a player in the Rangers lineup for the European games that you know will come to the forefront. But is it a you know is it a Ryan Kent that comes there for you know for obvious reasons? That Kent's had a very good, very impressive Europa League campaign. Yeah. I thought, I think he's he's shown on that stage. I yeah. think he's maybe reserved some of his best performances of the season for the European as games. Well. Aribo has a good yeah. season, but nothing that jumps at it. You say he's he's the one. There's quite a few thing. players who have had purple patches, if you like, like Jack Amakis has had a really good two or three months. Satati came in and make, made an impression. Like Morelos has had a good two or three months of late. Craig Gordon, I think, mm. would possibly be in consideration. I think some of the performances this season have been excellent. Yeah. Um, it, it'll be interesting to see exactly who gets the run goal of the season I think Conor Ronan um, definitely I mean mm -hmm. one of his strikes for St Mirren was absolutely outrageous um, that one against Hearts albeit he'll not be happy because they ended up losing the game but it still was an absolute peach of a goal um, I, I'm trying to think of he had won it he had won at Love Street as well yeah he had won at Love Street mm -hmm. against I can't remember who it was but it was similar similar strike, strike yeah top corner um Keogh goes in the League Cup final, the lob, yeah. a decent finish. That was a good finish um, as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other goals that might stick in people's minds, but that's going to be the Sky Sports, I think. Um, they, they always do the goal of the season and the, uh, the PFA Player of the Year awards, which incidentally, Ruffy, takes place on the 1st of May. Will you be in the country? Yes, just, I'll be here. Just yep. checking just yep. to see where you are on it. Um, OK, a uh, couple of things. Not too great to hear it. Uh, Christian Eriksen um, scored on his return for Denmark, but hit by a coin. Um, this is a guy. This is a guy who, as we all know, I mean, we're looking at the the game where people thought we'd lost Christian Eriksen, and thankfully, just due to quick thinking, um, he was saved on the pitch after that heart attack. Now. You know, he's back playing for Denmark and scoring a goal. It's just, it's an unbelievable story. It's well worthy of a movie, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a it's a feel-good story. I think no one really expected that if he had to get back playing that he would maybe make a return to full international football. I think it feels quite extraordinary that you saw what happened in the summer and then, you know, to get nine months down the line and he's, he's back scoring for his countries. It's a remarkable tale, but... Yeah, being hit by a coin might yeah. just bring him back to reality. Well, not just once, twice, during and after the match in an interview, Ruffy. What does that say about the, you know, honestly, the conduct of some people? For that guy especially, yeah. if anything, he should be throwing flowers at the bottom base of his feet and saying, great to see you. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the morons are everywhere. You know, you just hope they get caught and punished. That's the, the main thing. But uh, you're right, it's hot. I mean, what mindset? makes people do that yeah absolutely uh, ok we talked about Tierney and uh, the never ending story linking him with a move to Spain uh, and notice Barcelona have reached agreement with uh, the Brazilian forward at Leeds United uh, Rafinha I think he's a great player Ruffy and isn't it great that the fair play from FIFA <laughs> and UEFA is working really well at the moment Barcelona who announced £1.5 billion pounds worth of debt albeit it's now going to be the new camp the Spotify new camp um so clearly they've managed to show that they've got enough money to go and sign somebody like Rafinha as well. He's a good player. Yeah, he's a he's a brilliant player. You know, they've have, they've obviously went off the boil a wee bit, but he's certainly been superb. But I mean these these big clubs know the ways to get round the rules. Yeah. That, that's it. They just say it's a training ground or something or it's a oh, I don't know how they do it, but they yeah. they the accountants must do their work. Yeah, so to go ahead. and Ruffy, you're saying that with a bit of envy there, thinking to yourself, if only we could work that out for Party Thistle as well, to go 1.5 billion in debt but still sign players. Can you imagine Collie with 1.5 billion? <laughs> no, if, if Spotify want to come to us, the Party Thistle stand after them, we have no problem with that whatsoever. Absolutely, the Spotify Stadium. Spotify bro. football show. <laughs> yeah, you know, hey, we'd sell our soul. Ali, we would be selling our soul to the devil, let me tell you um, Tottenham are also in the race for Memphis Depay you, th you think he would be coming to the end of his his uh, time as a player he's like uh, he's a little bit like you talking about Tierney he's only 28 yeah who feels as though he's been around yeah. forever I think Barcelona will to be fair empty out quite a lot of the players that they don't want this summer as well yeah I think it's a period of 
transition for them. I think in recent months you've just seen them slowly getting their act together again. I think I think it'll be a big summer for them. I think you'll see plenty go out and I think they'll spend big again to bring players the guy in. Guy's another one who does it for his country and doesn't seem to do it for the clubs he plays for. Yeah. I mean, his country is was magnificent. Yeah, it absolutely. It's a, it's a strange one. I'll, I'll tell you one thing we're really looking forward to this week it is, of course, uh, the chance for you to give us your thoughts on who's going to win the big games. Uh, last week, we gave you the chance to give us your favourite Scotland goal. There were so many options for this one. And the uh, basically, it was an easy to enter competition. You basically told us who you think um, scored the best Scotland goal. And it, was, it wasn't a definitive one. There was one clear answer. Everybody who entered the competition had a chance to actually subscribe to the channel or indeed just post who you thought it was on our Facebook and follow us on Facebook uh, as well and the chance was to win an iPad Ruffy selected one winner at random and I can tell you as it goes up on the screen there Ruffy it's uh, it's a lady who's won the iPad fantastic I'm sure she'll have great great fun with it and uh, we'll be dropping it off uh, well, I don't know actually I'll need to find out where she comes from but I'll read her name out because Ruffy clearly can't see the screen well done Aileen Crawford <laughs> I was wondering why there was a delay there and then I realised he's as blind as a bat uh, it's a strange first name that iPad yeah <laughs> absolutely I'm amazed I knew as soon as there was a delay Ali he could not see in front of his nose uh, well done to Aileen Crawford she picked Archie Gemmell's goal in 1978 yes. Ruffy would you disagree with that? No, I wouldn't. Uh, as I said, the other ones I would throw in would be David Neary, and then we talked about Kenny's, but to a World Cup final, uh, to do that kind of goal against yeah. them, absolutely. Team that go to the final, yeah. uh, to, to dribble rings around three or four of their defenders and then stick at the back of the net. Yep, good choice. Yeah, it was a good choice. So we've had some fantastic Scotland goals down through the years. Some of them, uh, possibly in home internationals, didn't have as much clout. Uh, but as Ruffy mentioned there, to do it in a World Cup final, Archie Gemmell, and Archie Gemmell from uh, certainly my younger days watching him at Derby County and Nottingham Forest was just a... He was just a sensational player and he had that in him at times uh, to score great goals, but he was a driving midfielder as well. Uh, good lad to have around in the dressing room. Yeah, good fun. Uh, very serious, as you can imagine. You know, right. somebody So that you didn't it, really hang about no, with no, him, did no, you? No, 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 no. <laughs> if, if, if Archie gave you a stare, you knew there was... There's you something wrong. Game a wee bit. <laughs> yeah, just out of curiosity, when Johnny Rep hit the goal oh, and it came off mean, Archie, did yeah. you give Archie the stare? No, no I, mean, I never admitted to it to about 30 years later. <laughs> yeah. You know, I said, God, thanks a lot for helping us out with that one. Yeah. No, absolutely. and I don't think it would have made much time. I mean, it did hit his boot on the way up. Yeah. But, uh, but it's still gone in anyway. No, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, there's lots of times when you make a save and, you, <laughs> and when I looked around and saw it at the back of the net, because I got a good hand on it and I thought I'd put it over the bar, but. Unfortunately, yeah. the altitude and everything. Oh, yeah, I forgot, <laughs> all, I, forgot, I forgot all about the altitude. I've heard it all now, Ali, on a goalkeeper with an excuse. Um, I'm sure we've heard uh, more than a few excuses from goalies. Will we hear them this weekend? There's some real cracking matches to look forward to with implications at the top and the bottom. Hopefully, uh, you will join us with special guests. Incidentally, we've got a one to one out at the moment with, uh, of course, Jamie Murphy. Uh, who was at Rangers, he was also at Hibernian, decided that he didn't want to sit on the Hibs bench, he wanted to get out and play uh, football and I think that's to be admired Alison, players that don't want to just pick up the wages, Jamie all through his career has mm. thought I could stay at Rangers with my contract and sit on the bench and be a bit part player but he wanted to get out and play at Hibs, new manager comes in he thinks Am I going to play under Sean Maloney? Let me go out again. And it was good listening to him in his career and the managers that he's worked under, Nigel Clough, and, and the different styles and techniques of managers. Yeah, and I think too he'll know he's not got a lot of time, playing time left in him. I think he'll probably want to maximise it just to get any opportunity to play he can before the door closes on his playing career. I think he, he's... Um, I think he's a very solid professional. I think he's done well at all the clubs he's been at. Um, a lovely guy, a, a lovely boy as well. I think you always got a sense of him, trying his best. No airs and graces. He's quite a humble character. Uh, I think you would wish him well and, and hope that he goes out and, and finishes his career on a high. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's got a good two or three years left in him, Jamie. He was great to chat to. Some great tales as well. Um, not only Jamie Murphy, you could pick uh, Gordon Strachan out there. James McPake's been in the studio chatting to us as well as 
Pat Nevin. There's lots more one to ones. Some of uh, Ruffy's old teammates will be coming into the studio for one to ones as well. Uh, so it's well worth getting on to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you'll get all the notifications of when we are live. Uh, Monday to Friday, we've got the football show and we've also got some great unique content. And Jamie does indeed pick his dream team of the best 11 players he's played with. And there's a few surprises in there, and it's well worthy of looking out for that when it comes out. Well done to Aileen Cross. Offered. She is a winner with PLZ Soccer. She's won herself an iPad. You could win something special in the next few days. There's more competitions on the way. But my thanks to Ali and to Alan Ruff and to you uh, for watching us here today. We'll see you tomorrow.